Uh, let me ask you, is this you? If any of these questions resonate something within you, then you've come to the right place. Why am I unable to sit and play board games with my kids? I think uh, board games is a really good name for these things because, at least for me, they were the most boring things in the world to do with my kids. Why can I obtain a college degree yet I can't figure out what to cook for dinner every night, let alone remember what to get uh, at the grocery store when I'm shopping for ingredients? Why does the sight of a pile of dirty laundry make my heart palpitate? Why do I have panic attacks in the grocery store? Why can't I get my kids to sit through dinner? Well, we're going to address these kinds of questions today. And I need to share with you that I still struggle. I don't have all the answers. If you're here because you're going to get the magic bullet to make life, you know, very easy and uh, wonderful, that's not the case because we have ADHD in the picture. And even experts, I've been in this field now for nearly 20 years, and I've known about my ADHD for longer than that. So even us, or we, even we experts, screw up at times. So let me share a personal story. I never learned to sew. Um, I went to middle school where kids were taking uh, at home that class, and I plunked sewing. So, you know, then I got married, had a family, and one of my kids wanted to be a brownie. So those of you moms out there who have brownies and Boy Scouts, you know that your kids are coming home with those badges that you're supposed to sew on to their vests or their shirts. And when that started with my daughter, I totally freaked out because I just can't sew. I, my kids learn early on that they were to go to their father if anything needed to be sewn. But I figured, okay, you know, I'm going to give it my best shot, and I'm going to come up with my own accommodations for my lack of sewing skills because I'm going to talk throughout this session about uh, coming up with new accommodations that work for you knowing now that you have ADHD in the picture. So getting back to my daughter, she came home with these badges every week, and I was so proud of her but not proud of my own lack of sewing skills, so <clears throat> what I did instead was I took a stapler and I stapled her badges onto her vest, and I thought, oh man, see, I got it made. I know about my ADD, and I'm not going to let this get me down, because I found a solution. Well, week after week, you know, it started to add up on her vest, and one day, she came home crying, and I said, what's wrong? You should be proud of all of these badge <clears throat> badges on your vest, and she took off her shirt, and she showed me her skin was ripped up and torn and bleeding from all the staples. So I thought, oh, boy, I really screwed up this time. So, you know, we can think that we have all the answers, but sometimes we still are going to get uh, screwed up, just like I did in that incident. So let's get into the purpose of this presentation, which is to help moms like you with ADD cope with everyday situations that seem so easy for other women to handle, at least in our minds it seems that way. As moms with ADD, we feel that we should be able to have that perfectly clean house, well-behaved children, all while holding down a full-time job for many of us, just like everyone else can seem to manage and juggle so well. But what we need to start doing, and this is the theme for today, is we need to start reframing who we are. We're moms with ADD. Our brains are ADD brains. And what we need to begin to do right now is to change our internal expectations and shift our strategies so that ADD can begin to work for us. Uh, I encourage all of you to pick up Sari Solden's book on women with attention deficit disorder. That was a, a book that totally changed my life, and I think it will for you too. So we know now that there's over 4 million women in the U.S. alone that have ADHD. Unfortunately, the great majority of them have not been diagnosed and therefore not treated. So what we're seeing for those who are either diagnosed or not diagnosed is a tremendous amount of shame. And what we need to start to do is ditching that shame because ADD is a real medical disorder. It's not a character flaw. And it's time to start shifting our strategies and realizing that we have a whole different ball game here. So what is an example of shifting your strategy? Well, the one that did not work for me, you know, with the badges on my daughter's vest, but here's another one that, uh, that did work for me. When my daughter was very young, my hyperactive ADD daughter, um, she just could not sit at the dinner table. She was so out of control. She had a, uh, and continues to have a very severe case of this, that she would fall off the chair. She would uh, spill things. She would have tantrums. She would be crying because our expectations, as many parents have, was to have a family meal with all of our kids, you know, eating nicely and having a conversation. But that just didn't work. So when I consulted with her psychologist way back when, he said, why are you forcing her to sit at the dinner table when it's making her miserable and you miserable and creating all of this tension? 
So that shift in strategy led me to allow her to eat in a different room from the family in front of the TV. All the things that we're told we're not supposed to do with our kids, I had to, you know, start shifting how I thought about my family and make it work for us. So for many, many years, she ate in another room with a TV on, which allowed her to be uh, able to focus on getting food in her mouth. So there's just one example of, of how to change, you know, your strategies in making your family work uh, in the realm of an ADHD uh, uh, family. So let's look at um, some characteristics of women moms with ADD. I'm not going to read all of these because it's going to be too co- time consuming, but, you know, a lot of us have uh, um, overreaction uh, and we, we worry, we obsess, we can be spacey, we can be shy, um, but there's also positive things. We're, we're idea people, we're sensitive, we're kind in general. So I don't want to get too much into the characteristics because you'll be able to read these more when you have time and I have time. Uh, I really want to get into more of the uh, information to share with you. So um, ADD is not an excuse. It's not an, it's really important to understand this. It's an explanation for the problems that we have in our families and within ourselves. It's important to know, again, that it's a real medical condition and that it's recognized by the medical community and national organizations like CHAD. So what are some of the special issues that we moms face? Some of this, uh, again, comes out of Siri Solden's work. Uh, let's get to the next slide. And I think it starts with the society's expectations of women. And we learn this from the time we're young girls, that we're seen as caretakers, caregivers, and that we are the ones who are expected to direct and oversee activities of our family without uh, much support at all. Uh, Men and executive women, well, they have secretaries and assistants at work, but those of us, especially those of us who are at home with our kids, we don't get a whole lot of support. So there's extra stress, especially if you're a working mom, because we're still doing most of the child care and the housework. I know that that's changing, but uh, it's not changing fast enough. Moms with ADD, we also have hormonal challenges. We know from the work of Dr. Patricia Quinn and others that our hormones and changes in hormones that uh, that makes our ADHD symptoms worsen almost across the board as we get older, as our hormones change. And for you stay-at-home moms, your days are very unstructured, so it can be really hard to complete the tasks because they're boring, repetitive, and if you have small kids at home, you're constantly being interrupted. And for those of us with ADD, and most of you here, as well as me, you know, we don't deal well with these constant interruptions. It throws us off course. We get distracted, but it also can cause a real strong reaction in us. And again, we get very little positive feedback. Who's saying, you know, to us uh, that, oh, you did such a great job organizing your cupboards and your spices? We don't get that. So without getting that positive reinforcement, you know, it can really do a number on our self-esteem. So, again, there's high noise level in a household full of ADD because if you have ADD, we know now that it's highly genetic and there's about a 50% chance they're saying now that if you have ADD, that one or more of your kids will have ADD as well. And women, we set the tone in relationships. We try to keep everyone in balance. We're in control for the most part of holidays and buying gifts and remembering birthdays and all that sort of thing. And we can also have difficulty communicating our needs to our partners and keeping our end up in disagreements because we tend to be overreactive or oversense. I hate those words. We need a different word for that, but I think you understand what I mean. We react quickly to things. We might be short-tempered. And for those of you here who are single moms, well, you really have a tough time because you're carrying almost all of the burden, probably all of the burden, or most of it at least. And you might have some problems with commitments in relationships because of boredom. Uh, A lot of women just kind of fly from one relationship to another, and that explains, you know, the ADD explains that kind of behavior because a lot of us can't deal with boredom. And then that can cause a lot of issues with low self-esteem. So let's look at the next slide. Do as I say, not as I do. Well, these are the common, some of the common uh, symptoms of ADHD. So, for instance, if if you as a mom procrastinate and you're overloaded with last-minute deadlines, well, how can you help your child with his or her homework uh, duties and not wait till the last minute when that assignment is due? So you can see that with your symptoms, it really does uh, create difficulties with your kids. So if you're disorganized, and most of us are, 
So how do you teach a child organizational skills? If you're hyperactive, how do you slow down enough to enjoy one-on-one -on -one time with your child? One of the difficulties I see, and this is my own personal experience as well, is if you are paired, if you, let's say, have the uh, inattentive kind of ADHD like I have, and you have a, hyper, a hyperactive, impulsive child with ADHD, that's a really tough mix because you just are not a, you know, a easy match temperamentally to begin with. And then you know, the ADHD symptomologies are different and it's hard. So I'm going to breeze through this and look at uh, this because we're going to talk about uh, more specifics in, during the Q&A when we have more time. So here's Supermom, um, a, a woman that we all strive to be, but we find it hard to be. So how do we manage living with our ADHD? So let's go through some general tips. And again, society's expectations of us are to have that perfect home, meals on the table seven nights a week, uh, entertaining people, having holidays, and just having it all together. But what happens to us as women is we internalize these expectations, and then if we feel we can't live up to them, we begin to feel empty and angry. We get uh, depressed. We can have actually, you know, develop clinical depression because of this. And we also see a lot of poor self-esteem and that, again, that sense of shame, that feeling of failure, and the question we ask ourselves, why can't I be a better mom? This is very serious stuff. So I like this acronym EASE, and that means um, ease into your ADD. Um, Educate yourselves and those around you about ADD. Easy for me to say, and I know that all of you have tried and some of you have been successful, and probably most of you uh, or many of you have not been successful because a lot of people undermine us. They don't really understand the difficulties that we encounter every single day. Except in our own ADD, that's also tough, and that can take years. Um, it's not an easy thing. It might involve going for some counseling. What we don't do enough is celebrate our strengths. Simplifying our lives, we're going to get into the specifics real soon, and eliminating overcommitments, we'll talk about that more in just a bit. So I'm hoping that all of you listening to me today, look at these pink tennis shoes. She stands out. She's different. Does that mean she's worse off? Isn't it okay sometimes to be different? Do we want to be like everybody else? So I'm hoping that you'll all begin, begin to break that mold in order for your world to work for you. Change your expectations of yourself. There is no right way to make a meal, to organize your home, to raise your kids, especially when there's that ADD in the mix. So I'm going to keep repeating. It's time to make up your own rules in your home, in your life, that work for you. Now, I get a charge out of this slide because here we go with this perfect family that we have in our minds and that we are com comparing ourselves to. But you know what? This family doesn't exist. I wonder how much they got paid to be in this picture, but that's another story. So we know that this is uh, in our heads for the most part because we're always comparing ourselves to these perfect families. So I, adv I advocate that if mom has ADD, if you have ADD, you know what? It's okay to carry in Thanksgiving dinners. Here we go again with breaking that mold. It doesn't have to look like this. We have to shake this photograph out of our heads and, and come in with some reality. So in my own home, you know, when we have a large holiday, I generally don't uh, cook up a whole meal because I, I don't do it well. It's not something I can play bass guitar, I can play the drums, I can write books, but I can't make a turkey. So that's fine. You know, I've gotten to that area, that time in my life now where I can say, okay, so I can't do that, but I can do this. Also, you know, when you, when you have kids at home, you know, we're expected in our own minds and from society's expectations to always be there and take care of our kids, well, that can be overwhelming. And it's okay to bring in a sitter, even if you're a stay-at-home mom or you're home on the weekends after a long week of work. It's okay to bring someone in to give, someone in to give you a helping hand. So once you get to that point of, of letting go of those expectations, you get to an area of liberate, liberation, which is so freeing. It's so wonderful. And I hope you'll all aspire to get to this point. And you know what? Even when you do, you're still going to have your trip-ups, just like I did with my daughter in her, her stupid brownie vest. You know, I'm going to continue to have my own challenges, even though I'm way down, you know, 20 years and plus of understanding and working with my own ADD. So in my case, you know, I may still face days in the kitchen where I have a burnt turkey. Uh, in reality, I'm never going to make a turkey, but I think I might promise you guys that I'm going to give it a try. 
So this is what's normal for me, and that's okay. So how do we manage our ADD? It's probably going to be hard for you to read this slide, so you may have to revisit this when we have more time. But uh, just to go quickly, the most important thing is getting the proper treatment, getting the diagnosis. If you think you might have ADD from listening to this session today, find out. Get the evaluation and then get the, the treatment that you need. It may most likely will include medications, and we are not a patient bunch of people. So it could take many months to get uh, the medication right. Maybe you need therapy, working with an ADD coach. Uh, I mentioned the Queens of Distraction um, is a very cost-effective way where you can uh, work online with me and my group of Queens to, to get coaching and, and work through some of these things. But the big picture is getting the support that you need, educating yourself, accepting it, delegating, using humor. Uh, I say all the time, well, when I screw up at home, I'll say, well, that's my ADD kicking in, and I make light of it as best that I can. Simplifying your lives, eliminating overcommitments. Now, that's a big one, eliminating overcommitments. I think that we tend to be people pleasers. I have an idea of why that is. I'll get that get into that later if it comes up in Q&A, but stop saying the yes word. If a teacher comes up to you and says, hey, can you bake uh, three dozen brownies for the soccer team, instead of saying yes, Stop yourself in, in practices. Say, let me think about it and get back to you. Because more than likely, you really don't want to take that on, and that's okay. So a lot of the tips that we're going to be talking about are in my books. Uh, we don't have time to get through a lot to, today because I want time to, to connect with you guys. So keep in mind that the hallmark symptoms of ADD, the distractibility, procrastination, disorganization, those are our, all are a big part of our lives and our kids' lives. So it is important and necessary to reframe the way you see yourself, which is a mom with an ADD brain, not someone who is lazy, stupid, or crazy. So start making accommodations for yourself as needed. Let's get into some specifics. This is my favorite because, as you can guess, meals are a real challenge for me. And if we have time, we can talk why that is for many women besides me. But this is my favorite source about when I first got married and I attempted a roast from my dear husband, who was very funny, but he didn't realize how hurtful uh, he was when he said that it was the best sliced wallet he ever tasted. Um, you know, we have to think um, outside the box. So some of the things that we can do is carry out. Now, you think of that as a luxury. I sure did for many years, but uh, carrying out or bringing in, however you want to call it, to me is not a luxury. It's an accommodation. It's an accommodation to get ourselves through dinner time. So carrying out is one option. The POS plan, uh, that stands for the plan or starve, um, and that's basically having index cards where you write down on one side a full meal, but make it simple, like roast chicken, mashed potatoes, and lettuce, a salad. On the other side, you you break it down into the ingredients that you need to buy at the market. And uh, I, I'll get into it more if you want to later, but it's basically a way to get around the hard part of which is, for me anyhow, making decisions. What am I going to make for dinner tonight? Shopping at smaller markets, a lot of us uh, get overwhelmed easily in large stores and malls. Like I mentioned earlier on, earlier on getting panic, panic attacks at malls and that sort of thing. So going to smaller stores uh, makes it easier because you know where things are and you don't get as overwhelmed. And then the kids, again, uh, dinner time, which is supposed to be you know our time to connect with our kids. It doesn't always work that way when ADD is in the mix. So if you're like me and your stomach churns when there's a lot of chaos in the house, you might want to eat before the kids do or eat after the kids. But you can sit with your family and hear them and talk to them and, and you know connect with them, but it doesn't mean you have to have your meal with them. Household tips. You know, you're always going to have a to-do list, so I think we need to start relaxing a little bit about this. I get lots of questions like, how can I make my house more organized and, and all that sort of thing. But um, I love what Dr. Ned Hallowell says. He says, just be organized enough, meaning if you can find, you know, your things and it's not a health hazard, let go of these expectations again of what we have for ourselves. So my suggestions for household tips briefly is to have messy zones set up. We try so hard to keep our house tidy that if you allow yourself to have a messy zone, I think it takes the... Uh, stress out of trying to keep up with the house. So in my case, especially when my kids were younger, my messy zone was my entire upstairs. I knew that I couldn't expect kids to make beds 
I couldn't make beds every day. I couldn't keep up with the piles of their clothes and toys. So I only allowed the immediate family to go upstairs um, because, you know, I, I would get embarrassed. MIF is make it fun. So one example could be, you know, to keep things working uh, at home with the kids' toys, you could give each, assign each kid a, a laundry bin, a basket, and give them 10 minutes and say, okay, um, whoever gets the most toys picked up and put away gets, and then you give them a small prize. It could be they choose what's for dinner the next night or that night. It could be they can stay up 10 minutes later before bedtime. Another idea is to put a basket hoop um, on the kids' doors, and then they throw their dirty laundry into the hoop, and it drops into a laundry basket. So making it fun, it can be really hard and exhausting because, as you know, kids with ADD get bored easily, too, and they want uh, you know something more fun to do. They get bored of the routine. Also, maintaining routines and consistency, very important but very hard. And those of us uh, with ADD, uh, it's a love-hate relationship. We need routines, but we hate them. But I would recommend that you try and make these routines part of your part of uh, your family life because that's what makes life easier for all of you. So here is that wonderful, happy family again. We're going to get into talking about family and parenting tips. Now, looking at this picture, I have to laugh again. Uh, this this image we have in our head, and here it is on the slide. These perfect kids. I never had a family picture taken where my kids didn't have food smeared all over their clothes, uh, including me. You know, I was just as uh, guilty of having messy clothes at times. And look at these kids. They're smiling. The parents are smiling. My kids never could sit through a, a shoot like this. More than likely, our families look like this. This is what I would expect from us, from what I consider, you know, families with ADHD kids. So what do we do? Well, first thing would start with uh, problem solving. I think we have a tendency to become uh, like dictators and we point our fingers, you have to do this, you need to do this, and that just causes more stress for all of you. So instead, you can look at the problem and say, we have a problem, um, what can we do about it? Instead of, you know, just complaining and screaming and all that sort of thing. So solve problems together. With family battles, Try and learn to remove yourself if necessary. If you see things getting worked up, you're getting worked up, the kids are getting worked up, give yourself a timeout. We know how to do that with our kids, but we don't do it enough with ourselves. So get yourself into the bathroom for a 10-minute uh, downtime or in the, in the bedroom, but uh, tell your family ahead of time. Don't just auto all of a sudden run away you know, like that. Explain, I need downtime because I don't want to blow up and make everybody miserable. And what's great about this strategy is it's a way to model behaviors for your kids so that they can eventually learn to remove themselves from a, a fight. Let them learn to go into their rooms and do something to calm themselves down. Picking your battles. Is it really that terrible if your kids run out of the house with two different colored socks? No. So start thinking about, well, what can I let go of? I think you know, some of us try to be too controlling because, again, we have that image in our head of having to be the great mom and perfect family. So it's time to let go of that. Homework time is horrible time. Horror time in my house anyway it was. I'm sure it is for many of you. Now I worked very hard with a, uh, an advocate back when my daughter was young and I put in her IEP, which many of you know what that is, that's where kids get special help at school. In her IEP I insisted that all homework be done at school because what I realized was having these head-to-head -head battles at home every night after school just created terrible friction between my daughter and me. And I thought, that's not worth it. What's most important is to have a good relationship with my child. So this may not work for you. My daughter, like I mentioned, has some other issues besides ADD. So if you can't get that done at school, then hire someone to come in and work with your child or have your partner or your husband uh, take over this part of the day because you're all, both of you, all of you are already exhausted and then you have to face homework or bring in a teenager, a high school kid or a college student or a tutor and take this on. Remove yourself. And then listen before reacting. That's, uh, again, you know, we tend to be overreactive and we're, we don't have a lot of patience at times and we kind of get to the point before your child does. So take a step back and listen more carefully to what your child is saying to you. So let's get into some personal tips. I call them self-survival tips. <clears throat> 
Again, getting help. Getting help with cleaning the house. It, again, is not a luxury. We have to break out of that thinking. If you can budget into your household funds uh, once a week, once a month, once every couple, whatever you can do, get someone in to help you clean the house. Have someone come in with uh, help for the kids. Like I said, even if you're a stay-at-home mom, <clears throat> you need a break from that. Go to support groups. Go to these webinars. Go to conferences. Barry Solden is going to have a really cool event in Ann Arbor, Michigan in uh, uh, mid-May. You can email me if you want more information about that. And this is a way where you'll be able to connect with other women, other moms who have ADHD in a very supportive, wonderful way of getting uh, information and enjoying the company of others who really understand you. There's so many people who don't understand us, and we need that connection. Then we get into self-care, which, you know, I don't need to tell you. We need to exercise and watch our diet, do yoga or something, meditate, get good sleep. I don't need to tell you that. You know that. But the problem is how do you do it? So I think we need to bump this up more. And instead of focusing so much on our kids, we need to also focus on ourselves. So finding a buddy who will maybe take walks with you, working with a coach who can help hold you accountable, those are ways to get these things done on a regular basis. And then giving yourself downtime. Again, it's not a luxury. So I suggest uh, if you're a working mom, for instance, that you stop somewhere at a Starbucks or a coffee shop somewhere, give yourself 15 minutes downtime so that you can unwind before you come back into the more important role, the more important job which you have, which is being a mom to your kids, partner to your, to your spouse. Organizing another big Big concern. I get a lot of questions about this. So we're going to talk about a few tips on organizing. And what we know is that if you have ADHD, visual cues are extremely helpful. And I suggest using bulletin boards. In my home office, i got bulletin boards. I'm looking at them now all over because I need things out in the open. And it sounds counterintuitive that we want to have our homes, you know, clutter-free. But for me, there's certain things I have to have in my face. Because if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. And that's very much a part of having ADHD. So um, one of my uh, tools for, for keeping on track uh, of things and organizing is I have uh, a notebook that I keep in my home office, and it never, never leaves my room. So I jot everything down of importance, reminders for myself, because I can't rely on my memory. And I suggest you don't either. So we need these kinds of tools. So I have a notebook, so if anyone calls, I jot down the discussion. I know that I'll forget down the road. Appointments I put down in, uh, in, in on there and also on a planner. But I also keep a pad of Post-its next to every phone in my house. And at the end of the day, if a call comes in and I can't get to my notebook, I'm in a different room, I jot it down and then I take that little Post-it note and I put it, I slap it right into that notebook. <clears throat> Using a timer, we know that we can have a tough time starting, but we can also have a Really tough time stopping, which we don't talk enough about. So using a timer for both of those, you know, set a timer when you need to be doing something, set it again for when you need to stop. Because if you're like me, you can get stuck on Facebook. Uh, a 20-minute uh, Facebook day can turn into three hours. So take advantage of the timer. And also there's tons of apps out there now. You just need to do a search on Google for ADHD and apps. Lots of great ones out there. So let's get into mom at work. Wasn't there a band, men at work? Well, this is mom at work. So one thought is using flex time. I know it's hard and not, uh, not everyone can get away with that, but it's also really helpful with ADHD. If you have kids at home, it makes life easier for you. If you can, if you can't, then um, finding out other things that will be helpful to you for work would be using a launch pad. So... Um, did I screw up here? Let me make sure. No, that's right. So a launch pad is basically having a space in your wherever everybody exits the house in the morning. If you're going to work, your kids are going to school, have everything laid out there the night before so that you're not running around crazy in the morning getting to work on time. Because that's one of the big issues is I don't get to work on time. I hear that all the time. So that's the launch pad. And then taking a break before coming home. We talked about that, how important it is to do that. Um, but also, when you're at work, figuring out what your style is. Uh, if you're a morning person, working on the more difficult projects that time of the day, 
Uh, if if morning is not a great time for you, that might be when you check your email, things that don't take as much mental energy. So I don't have time to get into a whole lot of that. But what I'm saying is that, in general, going with your ADD instead of fighting it will make your life so much easier. Find ways to make things work for you. Change that internal dialogue. Use new strategies so that you can live more happily and calmly instead of banging your head against the wall because we can't change our neurobiology just like you can't change uh, who you are, you know, what kind of uh, blood you have or what your skin color, all those things. We have to go with what we have, making accommodations for yourself. That is my main point here. And then these are some websites that you'll be able to look at um, when you, if you want to return to um, the slides that they'll have available online for you and books that I recommend. But getting back to, you know, wrap up, because I want to get to your questions, my final words, again, getting the proper treatment. Uh, that's paramount to, to make things work for you and your family, getting support. Uh, we just had a, our ADHD Palooza for women. Now, you can email me to get questions, uh, I mean, answers about what that was all about. But we're starting to understand more and more about women's needs, mom's needs. Again, Sari Solden's got this Better Together Fest coming up in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So getting the support you need, focusing on your strengths, stop uh, criticizing yourself, change that inner dialogue, and even if you need to write it down, the things that you're good at doing. And reframing yourself as a woman with that ADD brain, again, it's not being lazy or incompetent or crazy. It's just your, your biology. And embracing your differences instead of hiding them. Um, that's me and my daughter, and this is where you can find me.